Have you ever seen a massive container ship or cruise liner sail under a bridge and wondered, how do they know it would fit? It looks like a tight squeeze, and that's because it often is. One miscalculation could lead to a catastrophic accident. So how do they do it? The answer lies in some fascinating maritime principles, and we're going to break them down using this simple diagram. When navigating beneath a bridge or any overhead obstruction, one critical factor every mariner must consider is the air draft. It's more than just a measurement. It's a vital safety parameter that ensures the ship can pass safely without risk of collision. In this video, let's break down the key terms shown in this illustration, starting with the foundation, chart datums, and water depth. Let's begin at the very bottom. A nautical chart isn't just a map, it's a safety tool. To ensure a ship doesn't run aground, all depth measurements are taken from a single consistent baseline known as chart datum. Chart datum is a standardized reference plane usually set at the lowest possible tide level from which water depths are measured. In most cases, this reference is the lowest astronomical tide, or LAT, the lowest tide that can be predicted based on long-term tidal observations. This means the depth shown on a chart represents the minimum amount of water you can expect at that spot. Any tide above the charted depth will add more water, therefore more safety clearance under the ship. That extra space beneath the ship is called underkeel clearance, or UK seep. It is the vertical distance between the bottom of the ship's hull, called the keel, and the seabed. This is crucial to avoid grounding. Now, if there's a reference for the lowest water level, there's also one for the highest water level. Depending on the chart we are using, this reference might be the highest astronomical tide, or mean I water springs. These represent the maximum water level that can be expected under normal tidal conditions. This is particularly important when navigating under overhead obstructions like bridges. The height of a bridge or any overhead obstructions is listed on a chart known as the overhead clearance heights. It is measured from the highest astronomical tide, or from mean high water springs, up to the underside of the overhead obstruction. In this chart, the given overhead clearance heights are above the highest astronomical tide. It means that this bridge has an overhead clearance height of 40.8 meters above the highest astronomical tide. Both traditional paper charts and modern electronic navigational charts ENCs, provide this vertical clearance information. In simple terms, the chart gives mariners two critical worst-case values, the minimum depth based on the lowest astronomical tide, and overhead clearance based on the highest astronomical tide. Now, here's the dynamic part. In reality, the actual water level is usually somewhere between these two extremes. It rises and falls constantly due to the tide. This creates what we call the air gap, the vertical distance between the current water level and the underside of the bridge. When the tide rises, the water level increases and the air gap decreases. As the tide falls, the water level drops and the air gap increases. Now, the vertical distance from the waterline up to the highest point of the ship, like the radar mast or funnel, is called air draft. For a vessel to pass safely underneath the bridge, the ship's air draft must be less than the available air gap. The space that remains between the ship's highest point and the underside of the bridge is called air draft clearance. This is our vertical overhead safety margin. Navigating under a bridge or overhead obstruction requires careful planning and precision. 
mariners miscalculate the ship's air draft and under keel clearance, while also taking into account the bridge's fixed height and the constantly changing water level due to the tide. It is precise coordination of multiple factors to ensure a safe and successful passage. An example of this calculation will be covered in part two of this video series. That's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye for now.